In this video, you'll learn how noise canceling headphones work and why they may not be the best option for music production or critical listening. Noise canceling headphones are capable of playing your music while at the same time creating interference that combats the noise around you before that noise reaches your ears. The key principle at play here is called destructive interference. A simple sound wave is a series of positive and negative pressure changes called compressions and rarefactions. If I copy this simple sound wave and add it to itself, the two copies will sum together to create a larger sound wave. On the flip side, if I reverse the polarity of one of the waves and combine the two waves, they'll completely cancel each other out. That's because the compression or high pressure phase of one wave is met with an equal but opposite rarefaction or low pressure phase from the other wave. With active noise canceling headphones, the noise from your environment is captured by a microphone. Then the signal from that microphone is inverted and played back through the speakers alongside your music. When done properly, this will result in the environmental noise being canceled, leaving only the music. Now, just because the principle behind active noise cancellation is simple to explain, doesn't mean it's easy to implement. First of all, there's a difference in the noise level between the outside of the headphones and the inside, depending on who's wearing the headphones and how the headphones are positioned on the listener. It's critical that the noise level is accurately matched to maximize the cancellation, so engineers often design headphones with two microphones, one on the outside to capture the sound, and one on the inside to measure the difference in level as accurately as possible. This internal microphone also informs the digital signal processor within the headphones on how effectively the noise is actually being canceled. Another challenge engineers face is getting the correct timing and phase alignment. If the inverted signal is even slightly shifted in time, the cancellation won't be as effective. A complete cancellation only occurs when the level and phase of the two opposite sound waves are perfectly aligned. In terms of timing, there's a larger margin of error for canceling low frequencies than there is for canceling high frequencies. For example, while a one millisecond shift in time might cause only a small offset at a lower frequency, that same shift in time could cause a much more significant offset at a higher frequency because the wavelength of the higher frequency is much smaller. The lower frequency will still be mostly canceled despite the offset, while the higher frequency may have been radically misaligned. This is one reason that when you turn on noise cancellation headphones, the low frequency noise seems to disappear while the high frequency noise remains. Power on. What I'm trying to say is that while the basic principle behind this technology seems simple, Actually putting the principles into action requires very sophisticated engineering and design by much smarter people than me. Active noise cancellation headphones are great for noisy airplanes or coffee shops, but in my opinion, they aren't so great for music production or critical listening for the reasons that I've mentioned. I found it much better to use headphones with passive noise isolation. Among the best options are the Direct Sound EX29s. There aren't any microphones and there isn't any DSP built into these headphones, yet they still attenuate the signal by more than 36 decibels. Another benefit of passive noise isolation headphones is that it works both ways, to keep noise out and to keep sound in, which is very helpful for preventing the click track from bleeding into a microphone and ruining a recording. As you can hear, both of these headphones do a great job at isolating the listener from noise. If I were just casually listening or listening in a relatively quiet environment, I would choose the Sony WH-1000XM4s. However, if I were tracking music, especially around very loud instruments, that noise becomes a little bit too much for the Sonys to handle. So I would definitely choose the DirectSound EX-29s in a situation where I'm tracking music. 
You can find a link to both of these headphones in the description below. If you made it this far in the video, hit the like button and watch the video that's on your screen to learn more. I'll see you there.